I, we, um, we appreciate the media being here. You're informing the public, letting them know what's going on here, and uh, we, we appreciate that. Uh, we have uh, uh, several individuals here uh, that uh, are connected with, the, with this uh, uh, event today. Um, John Thompson, of course, is, is president of the Lee County Industrial Development Association. Uh, Kevin Considine, uh, my associate, United Country Brook Realty. Jeff Lovett, uh, president of marketing, Midland States Bank. Uh, Gary Gilbach is uh, chairman of the uh, Lee County Industrial Development Association board. We've got a couple of uh, city council members here, um, uh, Dennis Considine and, uh, and uh, Jeff Kuhn and uh, other folks here that are interested in what's going on. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to introduce uh, uh, these two gentlemen and uh, uh, they're going to make a statement uh, then John Thompson will have a few words to say then I've got a statement to read and then we can open the whole thing up for questions. So um, this is really a great great day for us. Uh, we've been uh, involved in working on this project for quite some time. Uh, we have with us uh, Ed Schinner and Peter Spellers. They are uh, two principals with this company, SGS Refrigeration. So, which one of you guys wants to get in the hot seat first? Why, why don't I start? Okay. And it's okay for me to stand up, I presume? Yeah, I'd rather yeah, stand You'll be yeah. fine. Good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> My name is Peter Speller, and uh, we're very pleased to be here in Dixon. Um, this morning we uh, finalized a deal to acquire some real estate and buildings here in Dixon. Um, there is a document here that shows you where that property is. It's 827 West Progress Drive. And this is the culmination of some uh, negotiations we've been having uh, that are linked to an acquisition that we made last week. Um, SGS Refrigeration uh, last week acquired the assets of a company called Crack Corporation that is a wholly owned subsidiary of Hussman of Bridgeton, Missouri. Uh, they manufacture uh, industrial uh, cooling equipment and uh, we acquired the assets of that business and we are pleased to say that it is our intention uh, to move those assets and uh, the business in total from Monterey, Mexico, where it is currently located, and relocate it to here in Dixon, Illinois. Um, it's been something we've been working on for the last 12 months or more, and I have to say that um, we're very pleased that it's uh, culminated uh, in these two acquisitions that uh, have been announced in the last few days. This is where we apply. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ed Shinner, who is much more familiar with the the business and uh, certainly more familiar with Dixon, and he'll give you a little detail of what the uh, acquisition is about. Thanks, Peter. As the press release says, uh, it's no accident that we're here in Dixon, Illinois. Uh, during my working career, I was responsible for the Imico business that was uh, formerly located in Dixon uh, for about 10 years and was involved with John Thompson and Mayor Burke in expanding that business back in uh, 04. And uh, the, the company decided to close it in 09. And since then, myself and some other people, including Peter, uh, have been interested in bringing uh, that product and those jobs back here to Dixon. Uh, so the reason we chose Dixon is obviously, there's a lot of people in this community that have the skills to build this equipment, to engineering, to design it, understand the customers, really understand the business. The second reason, there's no better place than to be in the middle of the country where you ship, you can ship to the east and you can ship to the, the west and there's a lot of our major suppliers uh, that are in this general area, including one major one that's about a half a mile from our location would be uh, a, a galvanizing, AZZ galvanizing. And this wouldn't be possible with the help that we got uh, over time from Jim and John and our banker here, who's, <laughs> who's our stakeholder uh, for sure in this venture. Um, we feel really welcome in this community. 
a tremendous work ethic. I mean, I know that from my experience going back into uh, from 2000 to 2005. Um, we couldn't be in a better place. So we're pleased to be here, and um, uh, things will be start rolling forward here in the next few months as we transition the equipment. The first thing we have to do is bring equipment and inventory up from Monterey. Uh, this is a little tricky because this is an ongoing business and orders are being taken as we stand here and talk. And those orders, the decision has to be made whether they're made in Mexico, whether they're made up here, how do you transition it? So uh, I won't have as much hair as I have now in about six <laughs> months, but uh, after six months, things should really be rolling fine and uh, creating good opportunity for the city of Dixon and Lee County. Sure. Well, uh, once again, welcome, uh, welcome to my home here at the Chamber and the LCIDA offices. And uh, uh, Ed and Peter uh, both know their way around here pretty well. Uh, uh, this room has been sort of their office away from from home, uh, you know, throughout uh, several several, several years months. now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're we're after now that you're really here, we're going to start charging you rent. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, uh, it's interesting, uh, I've been doing uh, this work for some time now, and it's really interesting how some of these things are sort of create a thread throughout your career. Um, one of the first things that uh, happened when I took over the role at uh, LCIDA was to get involved in Lee County Business Park, uh, which is not where these folks are located, but it is where AZZ is located. And uh, our first real uh, sale of industrial property out there other than Chuck Willett's operations uh, was to the, what was then AAA Galvanizing who came in basically as sort of almost a captive vendor of Imico. And uh, the galvanizing process was, was uh, very important to the product but the transportation costs of shipping heavy pieces of equipment back and forth to Peoria, Illinois uh, was the reason why uh, the galvanizing company came here. They had a good customer and they were across the road, take the equipment back and forth during the manufacturing process. That piece can continue now that these folks are coming uh, back here. Uh, we did several expansions of Emico over the years. We brought all the folks down from Polo, Illinois and consolidated. And I can tell you there's nothing more gratifying than being at an event like this on a day when you can announce that you're going to have jobs for people and folks investing in the community. It's a proud moment for everyone and we appreciate you guys' money and coming out of retirement. As Peter said this morning, you can only play so much golf. Uh, but, but it's true, uh, they are investing, um, they are creating jobs, they know their business and we're very appreciative uh, of that. Um, it's equally as painful when Emico closed to after having done all of that work to have to see those people um, leave their place of employment for the final day and go out and try and find something in a down business environment. This is a piece of good news that we've been working on ever since that happened four years ago. And so this thread has come back full circle again and for me this is an extremely beneficial day for the entire community and we're really glad to have you folks here and all the help from everyone locally, from the LCIDA board and the city, the county. Rick, Rick is here uh, from uh, the chairman of the board of the Lee County, and uh, Rick Ketchum is here to uh, support this as well. And is an active member of our Lee County Industrial Development Board, and so he's been through some of this with us too. And we appreciate all the help we get from the bankers here who are willing to help uh, put their piece of skin in the game and, and everybody. So. Thank you so much, and, and I'm going to turn it back to Jim. I think he's got some statements to make. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you, John. Got a little statement to read here. Uh, and Mike here is from, he's with the AZZ Galvanizing. Uh, I've known Ed and uh, Shitter for several years, and, and Peter for about a year. Uh, they have the experience, integrity, and the knowledge to develop SGS refrigeration into a viable, profitable company. They are dedicated to producing a quality product that will make them an industry leader. SGS is the kind of company that we need to attract to Dixon. First of all, they will provide employment to area residents with metal fabricating skills that have gone fallow since Johnson Controls closed the Dixon plant. Secondly, the company will have a ripple effect 
on another Dixon plant, AZZ Galvanizing, by utilizing their coating process and further strengthening that company as a job source. Finally, SGS Refrigeration with its reservoir of experience, management, commitment to quality, and its financial foundation has the potential to grow the company into a major Dixon employer. For example, think about Rainer Door Company that located in Dixon decades ago with a few employees producing wood garage doors. Today they are an international garage door supplier to several hundred employees, one of Dixon's largest private employers. The quality of life of a community and its future is dependent upon getting larger. In other words, it needs a population sign that keeps increasing in numbers. There are many factors that define the quality of life of a community, including its educational system, its banking strength, its housing, its health care, its retail sector, its transportation system, and many other elements. Underlying the quality of life in the community is a growing population. And underlying a growing population is a source of jobs for residents and non-residents wanting to live, work, and raise families in this great community. SGS is contributing to enhancing our quality of life by locating this plant in our community, which is much appreciated. Credit for this announcement today goes to several. Ed and Peter, along with this, the support of Dixonite Ray Schmidt, are to be thanked for their tireless and perseverant efforts to locate this manufacturing facility in Dixon. Local financing for such an endeavor does not occur without a strong banking system. Jeff Lovett and Midland States Bank have shown their commitment to growing our industrial base by providing <coughs> financing to SGS. AZZ is a growing com uh, company and vital support industry to SGS. Kevin Considine, associate of mine at United Country Burke Realty, has worked diligently for several months ready, representing SGS in the acquisition of the 30,000 square foot facility and nine acres in the Tollway Business Park, only owned by CenturyTel. John Thompson and attorney Gary Gilbach put the full resources of the Lee County Industrial Development Association behind the efforts to locate SGS in Dixon and Lee County. And underlying that support is also the county Rick Ketchum uh, chairman there. Uh, in summary, this was a team effort putting this deal together that bodes well for more jobs producing industrial development in Lee County future. And thanks you to the media for covering this positive event and informing the public about it. So at this point, we'll uh, direct your fire to these two guys. <laughs> why, are, why have you decided to move the jobs, I guess, from Mexico to Dixon? Usually you hear the reverse. <laughs> good question. Bro. That, that, and that is a very good question. Um, I mean, what we find, this is a highly technical, engineered product where quality and technical knowledge is extremely important. Um, it's one thing having a very low labor rate, but if it takes you more time, you have more problems, and the communication to get this product from um, the design engineer to being manufactured is somewhat complex, and the people in Mexico really couldn't handle it. So this is done for a number of reasons, uh, but predominantly it's a question of this is an engineered product where you need skilled, talented people and it just does not really exist in Mexico. Transportation an issue too, I mean, I'm assuming. Absolutely, yes. I mean, getting it across the border was an issue, and also um, the trucking south of the border leaves a lot to be desired. We often found that somebody would leave the plant in Mexico and get to, to the um, border, and it's already damaged and it has to go back <laughs> to be repaired. So that was a ma major issue, yes. And how many jobs are we talking about here? Um, well, of course, this is a ramp up. I mean, we're acquiring a business and um, we're adding a lot of technical expertise early on and the people working in the plant will be minimal to start with. But as we go over the next three to four years, we'll be talking of upwards of 100 jobs that we'll be putting in place here and using a number of the skilled metal workers that are currently in the uh, county underemployed. And then what exactly are you making with those coolers? Um, it, it, we call it 
industrial cooling equipment, but in these large refrigerated warehouses, cold storage rooms, freezer plants, we have these large pieces of equipment on the ceiling that blow the cold air around. That's what we will be producing here. They're called evaporators. There's a picture of one right here that uh, Ed thought maybe of. They, they have blow air at zero degrees, minus 10 degrees. I don't know that any of the cold storage operations in Rochelle have any bearing on this decision as well, because I know they do a lot of cold storage over there um, after the years. Not really on this decision, but Rochelle are clearly a, a past customer of this company that is currently producing in Mexico. So uh, one of the reasons that we have acquired this business also is there is a huge installed base of this product throughout the U.S. What happens with the company in Missouri that you mentioned that you acquired? Are they are no. closing that or moving people here from no, there? Uh, the company in Missouri, Hussman Corporation, is a large billion dollar company. And this division that we are acquiring the assets of is called Crack Corporation. And they have this plant located in Mexico. So Hussman Corporation is continuing, focusing on supermarkets and retail stores. I think it'll be mentioned too. The crack is spelled K R, not C R. Yes, yes right. <laughs> uh, you'll see it here. Especially it's, coming out of Mexico. Yeah, right. K R A C K, Crack Corporation. So, will you be doing an, any initial hiring here this summer, or how is that going to work? <clears throat> um, we will be ramping up uh, production here, and uh, we have a commitment to be out of the facility in Mexico uh, by the middle of the summer. So if we look at late spring through summer here, we'll be hiring people for sure. We already have our first three employees here. 